Hey guys, last night I put together a 1.5 kilowatt water-cooled spindle kit from Pwn CNC. Um, I go through lots of tips and details. Stick with me and let's, uh, let's delve into it. Here we are with the uh, 1.5 water-cooled spindle. Um, this is the 1.5 kilowatt um, water-cooled but this, what I'm about to go over is basically covered for pretty much any of our water-cooled kits, um, whether it's the uh, 0.8 or even if it's the upcoming uh, 220 volt um, uh, water-cooled uh, 2.2s. The size of the motor is basically the most, the biggest difference between the, all of the kits. Um, they'll all come with these various pieces, including the VFT, the uh, spindle cable, the uh, power cable, um, some wrenches, some collets, uh, the collet nut, um, the uh, the pump, and some uh, some tubing lines, um, and our manual and that sort of thing. Um, that's basically what comes with any of the kits. Now this little guy right here is a little extra piece. Um, he is a uh, special cover, just in case you don't want to mount this in an enclosure or in a cabinet or something. Um, this will give you that extra peace of mind that covers up the wires. Um, these wires right here, from basically from this section right here, this length here, gives you the most protected version of the wire that's exposed. It may come across the hands or whatnot. So that'll protect the wires. Um, if you've got that, I only charge uh, cost for this. So this is extremely discounted piece, um, simply because I don't want to uh, compromise on your safety. So if you want... Uh, this piece of mine in your VFD is not going in a cabinet. Uh, pick one of those up. Um, the only other things that you will need to make this job work for your water-cooled spindle is you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver for installation and a uh, 14 millimeter hex uh, um, 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 uh, wrench. Um, this is for the uh, water for the tips of the water-cooled the, the nuts there. You may need additional tools or whatnot if you're going, depending on how you're going to mount the VFD, which can be mounted by screws or on a DIN cable here. Um, you may need that. Um, that that DIN bracket is not included. You can get a bunch of them on on Amazon real cheap. So what this video is basically going to cover is the installation, hooking all this up um, so that you have a completed system. What I'm going to do is basically cover exactly what the manual does. Um, and we're going to go step by step so you can follow along in writing and uh, on the video so you can see what the heck's going on. So in the manual, real quick, before we get too far into it, let me set things aside here. Um, the manual, it is a full color manual. I wanted everything so you can see all the details. Got our safety instructions, obviously don't drink um, while you're doing this or while you're installing the machine or whatnot. Take personal safety. This is your responsibility kind of thing. Um, we've got our table of contents. Be sure to read that, by the way. That is important. Um, we've got our table of contents and such. Um, all the information, know exactly where in the manual to go. So I wanted to be as transparent as possible. So because of the hundreds and hundreds of hours I've spent researching, understanding, learning, and um, identifying and, and choosing all the various parts that I wanted in my spindle kits. Um, I put much of that information right here. It's all outlined right here. Um, everything from the considerations that I took to the uh, speeds, to the, to the, the size of the body of the, of the, uh, of the spindle motors, um, everything is all detailed right here from spindle cooling to talking about the decisions between the two, the spindle diameter, we've got the weights of the various motors and the sizes, um, details out what's included, what's not included, um, and what's not included in your water-cooled kit, of course, is your wrenches and that sort of thing. The uh, cover is not included. This is a separate purchase. Um, the bucket, coolant, and some distilled water. So what I recommend for uh, cooling these, these water-cooled spindles is one, um, one gallon of pre-mixed antifreeze to two gallons of distilled water. 
Now mix all that up into a, into a three or a five gallon bucket. Um, put the lid on it, run the tombs on it, drop your uh, pond pump, and we'll talk about that in, uh, at that step, uh, during that step, and you've got a nice um, good cooling system. If you choose to go the extra step and get a chiller, chillers um, are available. They're on, uh, they're on Amazon. There's lots of places to get them from. They're very heavy and bulky and kind of big for my, uh, for my small shop here. So if you want one, jump on Amazon, buy any of them, they'll all work. You can run the uh, cable, uh, the, the tubes down to it um, to plug it in so that you can uh, get the cooling from there instead of using the pond pump. Um, I believe I have a chiller on my uh, laser. Um, it's actually a cooling chiller. It's, so the recommended one is basically like the CW300. It's like 175 bucks. If you wanted to go a step even further than that, my laser has an active chiller. Um, what it means is it's not just filtering it through a coolant and fan system like your air conditioner does. It's actually filtering, it's actually re a refrigerator that cools it down. That's a CW5000 or 5200 or 5500, I believe. Um, that's what I have on my laser. But this thing, it's sufficient if you just get a 3000, if that's what you wanted to go. But the pond pump is more than sufficient to handle your needs. But let's see, uh, let's see, I talk about what's included, what's required. Um, then I go into detail about the actual programming of the VFD. So these, pro the, these VFDs do come pre-programmed in your kit. The very first label inside of the uh, cover of your VFD details exactly what uh, motor this thing has been programmed for. In this case, it's been programmed for a 1.5 kilowatt, 110 volt, 12 amp motor. Um, so that's what this guy is already pre-programmed. But if you wanted to see how I programmed it, all the codes are there. So here's the one for the 0.8. There's some various differences in here. Um, one specifically like the motor rated power, the kilowatt size. So obviously I put 0.8 on the 0.8s, 1.5 on the 1.5s. If you wanted to understand that more, I mean, I do give a little description, a couple sentence description right here. But if you grab your VFD manual, and for example, if we look at like P0.0.07, if we scroll over here or slide over here to the right, um, max frequency hertz um, is what that means. But if we switch over here, it looks like it's a page um, 28, is a big table of all of the P codes. So these are all the P function, the function codes. So if we look over here, um, look up P0.0.07, max frequency. Um, the factory setting is 50 hertz. So of course, these motors are 400 hertz, mo hertz motors. So based on that, we're gonna enter, or I entered in 400. So you can look up each of this, and of course more information looks like is on a page 66 for that particular setting. Um, so we can scroll back and we can learn all kinds of things about what I changed and how you, uh, how you can read it. But that's for research later if you wanted to understand exactly what I did. If you have any questions or comments, I've delved over that manual for hours, identifying each individual items and that sort of thing. So I probably have answers to many of your questions. Um, reach out to support at PwnCNC.com. Um, if I don't know the answer, I do have a direct line with their engineers, um, of the, in, the engineers who developed this uh, VFD, and I'm able to uh, ask questions and get those answers for you. Um, that may take a couple of days because obviously it's a, they're in China, so there's a day shift difference and that sort of thing. But um, if I don't know it, just reach out. So on to the installation. So let me set this aside because I know that step one involves pulling out your palm router. So go ahead and remove the palm router out of your router mount and prepare uh, that router mount for um, the spindle. The way you prepare it is if you don't have, if you already have a 65 millimeter router mount, then you're good. Just uh, go on to the next step. If you don't, you may need to reduce it down. Like if you have a, a DeWalt router right now and you're going to the spindle, you need 
to reduce that 69 millimeter diameter down to 65 so that it'll hold on to the spindle. I have a couple 3D printed options. In this case, this is for the uh, X-Carve because it's got a really tall um, spit router mount. Um, this was designed for the Shapokos. However, um, most people probably have this built in aluminum. They've probably provided it to you in aluminum. Um, and it, if you look in on the picture, on the Shapoko picture here, you can actually see this piece in aluminum already mounted into the uh, thing. So if you've got a carbide router, you probably have one of these made in aluminum, or you have a newer Shapoko. The newer Shapokos have 65 millimeter mounts. So enough of that. Those are sold separately just in case you need, you require them. Those are also pretty cheap. Let's see. Step two, prepare your motor. So I'm going to set this aside. We're going to follow along the instructions as we go. And step two basically says prepare your spindle. So I talked for all good 15, 20 minutes, and then my camera shut down and I lost the entire video. So my spindle is already clean, but yours may not be. Take a, take a, mo take a cloth, wipe it down, wipe down all that lubricant that may be on the, uh, on the shaft and all that, because when that starts spinning, we don't want that spraying everywhere. So go ahead and wipe it down. And we're good. Nice and simple. So let's, uh, that is preparing. The next step is to prepare your collet. So I'm going to take one of my collets. This happens to be the uh, quarter inch size here. Um, and we're going to take the collet. We're going to take the big end with the little end I'm holding on to. We're going to take our collet, nu our, our nut here, and the nut and the collet join together like this. And whenever you put them together, there should be a little snap. So that little snap means that you should be able to shake that nut like crazy and it will not fall out of the collet should not fall out. So once you've got that properly, then you can take it and slide it right onto there it is, right onto the nut. So you can take the 13 millimeter wrench goes onto the shaft, 17 millimeter wrench goes onto the nut and you can tighten that down um, across a bit um, and as you use it. So some people will, uh, will buy extra nuts um, so that they can have and extra collets so they can actually have the bit, the nut, and the collet all assembled, ready to go, sitting lined up, all their bits ready to go for their cut. And they grab one, stick it in. When the bit change comes along, they pull that one out, grab the other one, and then come in and put the other one in and with the bit and the assembly all together. Um, that's an option. I sell those extra on the, on the website if you'd like one. Um, but on to step two. So step two um, is related to step one and the fact that now we're going to install this under the machine. I'm going to skip that step because obviously I'm, I'm doing this on a video. I want to get close-ups and that sort of thing. So I'm going to leave it right here on the table. Uh, but for you, you're going to have this mounted into your machine. I would recommend having like the main plate facing you forward, um, facing the front of the machine so that you can actually see the direction, the, the direction arrows and that sort of thing. But some people like to hide that and just stick it up so they can have a nice clean interface on their, on their, on their motor. It really doesn't matter which rotation you put this in. The key is the water lines and the power line. You've got to have enough run um, to clear everything that might be in the way because those have got to be state, you know, got to stay plugged in. All right. Now, next step is, so I mentioned a little bit about my coolant, my cool connectors. Uh, that's where you can actually unscrew this, uh, this, this little nipple and screw piece here and screw on a very fancy one that actually doesn't screw on. Um, you just take the, uh, the end connector and you just pop it on and then it's a no leak um, replacement. So you can pop the coolant line off, you can pop it back on, easy peasy, um, no leak. Um, unlike these guys, these guys you want to leave the lines plugged in because the instant you unplug them, all that coolant that's sitting inside the chamber um, could leak out if you tip this upside down. 
So that's why the no leak no leak connectors are nice. That's why I came and brought them out. But that's a different product, so we'll talk about that later in a different video. Okay, next thing is we're going to attach our spindle cable. So our spindle cable, and that is this guy right here. It has it's an aircraft connector. Now these smaller ones are uh, H17. If you've got a 2.2 kilowatt motor, it's gonna have an H20 connector on it, a much larger connector. So these smaller motors, I went with the uh, H17 connector. So it's got a, uh, um, I forget what this glass style material is, but you don't wanna drop this or anything like that. This, because uh, if it hits it in the wrong place, it might, it might break off. But if it does, reach out. I've got extra cables, they're all on the website and all that. Um, there's a notch right here cut out of this um, cut out of this part and then of course there's a matching notch on the motor so you're going to want to match those up together plug it all the way in and then you can start screwing it all the way down now once you get it all the way down there it goes now I've got a nice secure connection I did put a very stiff heat shrink right up here. Um, this will this means whenever you're rotating it or rotating the wire or anything, this gives a nice strong tension re um, relieving uh, connection right there on the aircraft cable and keeps everything nice and, and together. So on to our next step. Let's see, we talk about the spindle cable. Then we talk about the coolant lines. So I'm going to go ahead and move, remove this power cable because for demonstration purposes it's a lot easier if it was not there as I showed you how to plug in the coolant lines. So let's see. Okay. Let's set this aside for now. And we're going to bring out our coolant lines. This is where you're going to need the 14 millimeter um, wrench, and we're going to plug that up. Okay, so we have got two colors here. Each one is 16 feet, so there should be plenty of distance for you to get to your coolant system and then trim the extra that you don't want. So we have a orange for the outline, for the, and then the blue for the inlet and the outlet. Blue for the inlet, because the idea is it's cool, it's cold, goes into the cool, the motor, heats up, and then it comes out the hot line. So these motors basically have a giant chamber inside. So there is no real difference between which one of these is an inlet and which one is an outlet. It doesn't matter because wherever the pressure from the pump pushes, which we're going to have it pushed down the blue line. That will be our inlet, and the other will be the outlet. So we'll take our little black nipple pieces here. We're going to pop those off. Pop, pop those aside. We don't need them. Let's start with our outlet, just because. So I'm going to take the outlet. We're going to take one of these nuts that I pulled off and I'm going to slide it right on there. It may be a little tight fit. It should slide pretty easily. Slide it up about an inch or two. I'm going to take the hose, force it right down. Now go gently on it. You don't want it to snap, uh, slip on you and might hurt your hand or something. Um, get that all the way down where the orange goes all the way down to the top of the thread. And then we're going to slide that nut down and tighten that down. And this is where we're going to take our wrench and tighten that down. It may take a, a little while to turn, but keep going. There's a much, you can't turn 360 on this thing because of the other nipple. But tighten that all the way down so that it is tight. I'm gonna, for demonstration, I'm gonna tighten that a little bit so that thing will lean down. Now, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the blue line. This one's a little harder, it looks like. There it goes. And just slide that up about an inch or so. And then take it and 
slide it over the nipple, slide the nut down, and tighten that up. And then take your wrench, tighten that up the rest of the way. There we go. So we have both lines, and unlike me, you should still have your power line plugged in. There it goes. You should have that already plugged in and ready to go. So this should be sitting in your, in your machine, sticking up. You could take all of these lines, run them along um, your cable chain. Um, since this is the coolant line, you may have opted for my upgraded uh, umbilical cord, um, which is basically, um, it comes with two clear lines, uh, 16, uh, 16, no, 32 feet of clear line, so you can cut it in half and have the same distance, as well as the, uh, some ribs that kind of hold these three together, and then a giant wrap, a braided wrap that wraps around the whole thing, gives it a nice clean look, um, just in case you don't want to run this in a cable chain. Um, but if you do, these should be, these tubes should be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty flexible. Um, although they may, they may resist some, but this isn't the, the most flexible, but that clear tubing is a lot more flexible than this stuff. Um, so if you went with that upgrade, um, you can easily just wrap it together or just run it all through a cable chain and save the uh, cable wrap for something else. But let's see, our next step is prepare the VFD. So I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to take this and set this way off camera. I'm going to have my VFD cable here. I've got my power cable here and I bring my VFD out. So I'm going to zoom in here in a minute, but essentially we're going to go over hooking this bad boy up. So we're going to need our screwdriver. We don't need anything else. Um, oh, um, if you did opt, and I would recommend this cover if you, if you don't plan on sticking this into a cable, or into a cabinet. If this is in it, if you put your VFD in a cabinet, you're fine. Um, the, the lines will be just fine. But if you have this up on a wall or someplace that is exposed, um, you're going to want to have a cover or something so you can protect the little fingers, protect this. Um, it basically, what this does is it hides this in here. You wrap it, you zip tie it down, and then the only thing that's coming out of the VFD bottom is the actual cable. So this is highly recommended, and if you do get one of these, in the bag you should have a couple of screws. So go ahead and get those first. Set the zip ties aside. Need a two and a half millimeter hex wrench, and you're going to put that that uh, um, that hex wrench right down the hole and just kind of clean it up a little. There may be a little 3D printed pieces or something like that that may be interfering with putting in the screw. But once you get that in there, go ahead and screw the. Uh, the head of the screw should be just submerged. We want it flush on this side. So it should be just submerged below the surface there of the print of the cover. So it's a little hard to hold this and lean over at the same time. Now on to, there we go, get our second screw in there, okay, should be just submerged and pretty, pretty much flush. If it's not flush, go ahead and back it out a little bit because it does need to be flush in order to install it. So we're going to set that aside for now. 
I'm going to zoom in and jump up on the table and we're going to wire this bad boy up. All right, here we are. We have got our spindle cable. We have our power cable. We have our um, Phillips head screwdriver and we have our VFD. Now when you pop that VFD off, uh, that cover off, um, the easiest way to do it is just grab it from both sides, kind of push down and push back at the same time. So once you pull that off, you'll obviously get that confirmation that this was programmed for your size of a motor. In this case, happened to be the 1.5 kilowatt, 110 volt, 12 amp uh, motor. Um, obviously this would be programmed properly for the one that you've got, but that's what this one was programmed for. Now, the, uh, the other thing to keep in mind here is this little sticker. This is the authority when it comes to your VFD and your cable. Um, the last thing I do whenever I marry up and I package these things together and the last thing I do for testing is I wire it all together, run some various RPM tests and, and, and some other things um, just to validate that everything is good and ready to go because I want a good quality product if I'm going to put my name on it. And the very last thing I do is I determine what the wiring configuration is on your motor. Now, you can switch the U and the V and it'll either turn the spindle motor one way or turn it the other way. One way is the correct way is forward, the other way is backwards. So when you wire it up according to your sticker, now it may be different in the manual. The manual, that particular motor and cable needed to go, um, needed to be wired in that way. But on your cable, on your, on your kit, it may be wired in this way. So in this way, it's got U is red, V is black. So I'm going to set this aside, um, and I'll try to keep it on screen here. There we go. As we're ready to uh, wire this up. We're on uh, step uh, six, preparing, and looks like we're going to jump over to uh, um, the VFD and the power cables and that sort of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our power cable here and our VFD cable, and if you purchased this cover, this cover basically mounts right onto the spindle and then slides down into place. And then we use the screws to hold it in place. So what we want to do is we want to have our, our cables come right through this giant opening right here. We slide those through. And we're going to slide that and just set it off to the side. Get that out of the way. And now we've got our, both our cables right here. So that way, whenever we have our cables mounted, our cover comes in like this, mounts in, and it mounts onto the bottom. So I set that aside and take our cables. So we've got our power cable right here. And according to the back of my, uh, of my sticker, uh, according to my sticker here, this matched up with my VFD, you'll notice that the L1 is black, L2 is white, and then we've got the ground. So we've got black, white, and ground. Rotate it so that there's not, not a lot of twisting tension right there. So we got it. We've got the bulk of our cable here, our flat spade cable here. On either side, you'll notice a couple of notches. When we push this, when we rotate it, push it in all the way, rotate it back flat, and then tighten it down. Those notches will help with the Pull it, preventing it from being pulled out along with the tension on the screw. So again, don't have this plugged in. Very important. Don't plug this in yet. Just leave it aside. Yeah, just don't do it. So we've got our, uh, our VFD here on our L1, which is the black line. So we're going to take the bulk of the cable pointing down, rotate it slightly, slide it in all the way, Rotate it back, and then we're going to uh, tighten it down, making keeping tension so it's pushed all the way in because we don't want that popping out. So, we're on a nice strong connection there. Now that will not come out. Next line L2 is our uh, white cable again, bulk of the cable pointed down. Rotate it, press it in all the way, rotate it back horizontal, and then 
tighten it down. I do want to make note that the uh, heat shrink, the heat wrap, uh, heat shrink wrap on here, it will not line up perfectly um, when this is fully installed. The heat shrink wrap was cut to an inch, and then it was it was installed so that it tries to cover up as much of the terminal as possible, uh, all the way up to those notches. So the, those the back of the uh, heat shrink will not line up. So we're going to take our, our green cable here. I'm going to bulk of the cable pointed down, slide that in, or rotate it, slide it in all the way, and then we're going to rotate it horizontal, and we're just going to kind of leave it there. We're going to leave it there for now. We're not going to tighten this down because we need to jump over to our VFD cable. You'll notice on our VFD cable we've got a, a, a green and a yellow green wire. This is our ground wire. Um, one gr the yellow green Runs on runs the full length of the wire over to the motor, which is internally grounded. The dark green wire actually grounds our shielding, or our, it's called our drain. That's the that's the metal braiding that's wrapped around on the inside of the of the of the cable to help reduce electrical interference. So any of that electrical interference that comes in hits the drain, runs down, and is grounded down the so it's grounded the entire length of the cable. So we're going to take that. The only exception to that uh, flat spade thing is right here. So in this one, in the exception, we want the bulk of the material pointed up because the bulk of the material on this other one is pointed down. So we want these flat spades to kind of, to kind of sit together. So we're going to put the bulk of the cable pointed up. We're going to rotate it slightly, press it into all the way into that grounded cable and try to flatten it back out. And while we're holding on to that cable and the ground cable, we're going to go ahead and tighten it down. There we go. So now our power cable is fully installed. Our ground cable on our VFD line is installed as well. Now, according to my label, um, I have got U is red. So we're going to take the U, the red wire, bulk of the material down, slide it into, and rotate, and tighten it down. Some of you may be pretty advanced on the electronics and that sort of thing. Remember, I'm, I've built a, just fast forward part, fast, fast these parts, because it's, just, just know that know how to do it, read the instructions, um, yeah. Now we're going to take the, uh, oh, we're going to take the black line, because for my label it says V is black, so we're going to take the V is black, bulk of the material, point it down, rotate it slightly, press it in all the way, rotate it flat, do do do, there, nice and tight, nice and tight. Uh, there we go. Bulk of material, rotate, slide in, and tighten the white wire down into the W terminal. There we go. So now you'll notice all of the wires are all nice and tug and snight, uh, tight. Now, if, if you did not buy the bottom cover, um, you're done. Um, go ahead and cut, put the cover on. I'm assuming you already mounted it and all that stuff, so you're good to go. Now, if you did buy the cover, before you put that cover on, we're going to do a little zip tying. So I'm going to rotate this sideways. It's a little easier to do it sideways. I'm going to take two of the zip ties, and I don't, I just, just like a little bit of a zip tie right across the back of these holes. So it goes in one and out the other. So I'm going to come in from the, from the inside area. I'm going to pass the zip tie right through for, right through one of the lines. Make sure the head of the zip tie is in the correct orientation. And then pop it right down the next hole. So it's going to make a U shape right through the holes. You can do the same thing to the other side. The middle trough and the middle 
two holes are actually for our automation cable. So later on when we release instructions on how to do that, we're going to, uh, we're going to, you're going to have a cable and that's how you can secure the, the automation cables. And of course the automation cables are going to go right through this section and right into the terminal block. So now I've got my uh, cable here and we're going to start with, so what we're going to do is we're going to zip tie right over this heat shrink at the end of the cable. And this is going to be really tight fit, so bear with me. Hopefully I can try to get as much of it on camera as possible. So I'm going to start my zip tie. And then I'm going to hold, put the power cable in its trough. I'm going to hold it with my thumb. I'm going to grab the other side and kind of tighten it down as best I can. And then I'm going to trim that that zip tie. So there, it is secure. Now we're going to repeat that process on our power cable. Again, this is a tight fit. It's kind of on purpose. Um, we don't need a whole lot of tight, a lo whole lot of material here. But there we go. Get that zip tie started. And we're going to trim the zip tie. Be careful with the wires. Now, I've got both of them zip tied. It's really hard to see on the camera, but they're all nicely zip tied and tucked away in there. And what we're going to do, we're going to rotate this sideways so you can see what's going on. So there are four, four notches. Two in the back that are stationary, and then uh, I guess they're all stationary, but two notches in the back and two in the front. The two in the front have our screws, uh, and what they're going to do is the two in the back plug into these two, um, these two vent holes here. Um, the two in the front actually fit right into that trough, and what it does is when the notches, when you plug it in, what you're going to do is plug the uh, back gently and then the front, and then you're going to, once it's fully pressed against the VFD, you're going to slide it back. So it's going to go in, slide back, um, only like a couple millimeters. So it's going to be flush on the back. And on the front, with the cover off, you'll be able to see the two notches sticking up and over the ridge of the flat part. Now, when we put the screws in, the screws are going to pop up here. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm holding it. I'm holding the, the uh, cover on and holding it pushing it back towards the back of the VFD. Oops. Oh, here we go. I'm holding it on and I'm holding it together. So I've got a lot of tension on my hand, on my left hand here. So there we go. Get this, uh, get this screw in there. And I don't know if you can see it, but you may be able to start seeing that screw pop through and squeeze right in between the front of the trough and the uh, the notch. So now I'm going to switch hand, switch. Uh, I guess sw can't switch hands, but switch sides and repeat the process. Just screw that screw in all the way. And you'll notice that now that cover is not going anywhere. Nice clean zip tie look. We got nice clean wires just sticking right out the bottom there. And we're done. Oh, one note before I go too much further. Um, I do want to point out a couple of things. So um, these two lines right here are, are our mod bus connection. Those are um, SG negative and SG positive. Those are for the RS-485 or Modbus communications. Um, Onefinities usually use those. Um, but 
when Cine and many other machines can just simply use the uh, PWM features. And that is, if you find the, it's really hard to see on the screen here, but uh, the one, I believe it is the, what, the second one over, this one here, is VF1. And then go two more, and then there's a ground, GND. So VF1 and GND. Those are the PWM and ground wires. Those are the two. Now there's a couple more that we may play with, like DI1, 2, 3, and 4. We can use those four expansion slots for accessories. Um, but we'll go into those. We'll, we'll, I'm exploring those right now, actually. Um, but we'll play with those later. Um, but just know that we're all done. <coughs> <coughs> know that we're all done. We're ready to go. And we can put our cover on. And we're ready on, to go on to our next step, which is... Um, oh, talking about our VFD. Let me uh, zoom out here. Oh, let me zoom out here. If you've got this VFD in a cabinet or something like that, you may want to uh, pop the controller panel off and get it a little closer. Because if you're putting it in a cabinet, you definitely want this closer. So I still, um, it's easy to mount this anywhere. Um, I have many, um, I have two options for uh, mounts. So here's a surface mount. So basically you surface mount it, you put a couple screws through. Um, just make sure you've got a hole for the Cat5 cable that will run. Um, the Cat5 cable is not included, but um, simple Cat5 cable between the keypad and the VFD will work perfectly fine. Once you've got your uh, keypad on your surface mount, this is the surface mount. There's a couple of notches. Um, one side is up, one side is down because it's slight, it's really hard to tell, but it's slightly off. But once you got it, just set that in there. Press it right in and it'll snap right into place. The Cat5 cable coming right out the back. Now pinch the two on the side, lift up, and it will slide right out. The surface mount, um, or I'm sorry, the flush mount option is also available. And that's where you could just take a pin or something, mark the outside diameter of the flush mount, and then you can flush mount it or press it right into a square or something like that to hold it in place. And then you've got your uh, your VFD mount there. So we're going to move on to our water pump. And so we've got our VFD motor. Bring the wires up here so we can see them. There we go. Nice and clean. Now we have two lines. We've got our coolant line and we have our inlet and our outlet. And our coolant line is pretty easy. So we've got a pond pump, a pretty basic submergible pond pump. The coolant can go all the way over the top of it um, because the, it pumps it in here, forces it up through the brass nipple that's included. So we've got couple of feet here, just pop that on. Um, this will allow you to uh, put this right down in the bottom of your um, of your uh, 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 five gallon or three gallon pump or bucket and allow you to, and it'll snap right into place and it won't move on you. Of course, I've got it on this wood um, thing here and obviously it doesn't snap the wood, but stick that on there um, and that, that should hold the pump in place pretty well run the power line up out of the bucket just up closer um right here i gotta pull these off this keeps clicking on me <laughs> set those aside um but um you're going to take the uh the, the little nipple here slide that in it may be plastic it may be uh it may be uh brass like this one is um but we've got the little nipple there, and what we're going to do is we're going to take our blue line and run the blue line, just run it right over the uh, over the brass nipple there. Now it will be pretty difficult to do, just kind of rotate it until you get it on. And the idea is you want this on as far as you can get it. It's going to be kind of difficult, but just go down as far as you can get it. 
That way, whenever the pump pumps the water in, or the coolant in, it pumps it up into the tube, goes down the blue line. Presumably, what's pumped in here is cold. Um, so it's going to pump it down in the blue line, and then the, uh, the uh, red line is just going to sit right inside the bucket. Now, um, let me get a uh, really close-up view of, of, of my bucket. Give me just a second. All right. So here I am uh, with a close-up of my, of, of I'm actually working on the PWN and, and uh, um, RS-485 cables there, and I don't have it plugged in, so I can touch it, that's fine. But, and of course I've got my, this is my, this is a VFD that I've got hooked up to my Onefinity, um, and this is the water coolant line that I've got hooked up to it. Now I'm currently, I keep my garage insulated, so, and, and, it's, and it's heated and cooled, so the coolant in here is basically just distilled water. Um, I didn't really do anything fancy, just distilled water. I know it won't freeze because it doesn't uh, overheat or anything like that. I've, I've got the umbilical upgrade on this thing, so these are clear tubes, but one of these is, is the inlet and one of these is the outlet, um, returning the water to the, to the bucket. This is my, uh, I believe this is my three gallon bucket. No, this is a four gallon bucket. I just picked this up at Walmart. This is really nice. It's got its grate, but I didn't use it. Um, so let's go ahead and look inside. You'll notice one wire, one of these tubes. This is the outlet, or I'm sorry, the inlet line that goes into the motor. And then here's the outlet line. And the outlet line is just sitting there at the bottom of the bucket. Um, that way, whenever the water is pumped out here, it goes through the spindle, spindle it returns back down this line and then just gets squirted back into here and the idea is, is this bucket will cool down this reservoir of water will cool down before it gets sucked back up into the pump um, and down into the thing Looks like we are ready for our last step now presumably you have got your pump and your motor all plugged in someplace you have got your uh, outlet and, and your bucket and all that in, in a good spot you have got your motor um, mounted to your machine. You have got your VFD plugged in or uh, mounted to a proper place. You've got your power cable. Uh, of course, these are going to be plugged into the bottom of the pond pump to hold it down into the into the reservoir. And there, we've got all that in place. Now we're ready to apply power. Now you can run these spindle motors during tests and that sort of thing without having to have coolant. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Um, but for you, what I would suggest is once you've got your bucket and your coolant all plugged in and ready to go, go ahead and plug in your pump. Let it go ahead and run. It's going to spit some air and that sort of thing as it's pumping the water all the way, or the coolant all the way through the lines into your motor. Just pump it out. Let it run for like five minutes or ten minutes. Let it run get all that air bubbles out. Obviously the spindle is going to be sitting upright, so the bubbles should be floating up to the top and really close to this outlet line, and it should all kind of squirt out and get, and get a nice clean pump going through your tubes. And let that run. So you're going to want to run that, flip that on, find a way to turn that on. I'm actually working on something where it uses a, uh, a signal triggered power strip. Um, I'm playing around with that. We, we can hook that up. Um, that'll probably be a future upgrade or, or, a, or an accessory kit. or There'll definitely be instructions on how to do it yourself if you don't want to buy it from me. But um, have that run every time you're running your spindle. You want that coolant. Um, the next thing is we're going to take our power cable, plug in our VFD. Now the VFD, to turn it on and off, you have to uh, plug it and unplug it. So it's good to have this as a switched um, plug of some sort. Um, this is a 13 watt or 13 amp maximum VFD. The motor runs at 12 amps. So theoretically, no more than 12 amps should be running through this line. If you have a dedicated 15 amp circuit. Um, I've got a 20 amp circuit so that I can run a couple extra things on it. Like I could run my pump and my VFD, and that's actually how I run it on my Onefinity. Um, I have both of them running at the same time. I also have a, uh, a 
an LED light, my halo light, plugged up to my uh, plugged up to that same circuit. So those are the only three things on that circuit. Um, everything else is plugged. The machine itself is plugged into a different circuit. Um, totally on purpose. I don't, I don't want this running the same thing because when this spins up to speed, it's going to be pulling 12 amps. So you need a circuit that runs it. So this is a dedicated 20 amp circuit, but you really only need a 15 um, if it's dedicated. Um, and this is a 15 amp extension cord that I'm running. So obviously I'm not going to run, uh, um, run it under load here. But have your motor pump running, have your plugged in, and you've got your VFD. Now, here's the cool thing. Again, I've already got it plugged in, so you can immediately hit run and start turning. So let me go over a couple of things first. So this VFD is blinking. Now let me, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on here. There we go. So the VFD is blinking. Now the blinking means that it is in a, in a reset or a paused state. Now that paused state essentially means that it will not send any power to the motor. The motor will not spin at all. It is safe to reach in there, touch things, and that sort of thing. Now, when I hit run, the, I, it turns to solid, and this dial will determine how much power is sent to the motor to make it spin. Don't reach down and touch your motor, touch motor if that thing is solid. Unless you're running a bypass switch, which I describe in a future section of the manual. Um, I will talk about that and I'll give some details on how to do that later. But um, there's a switch that you can actually cut, literally cut the lines, not literally cut, but run a, a, run a switch uh, between this line and the VFD that'll prevent, it's a hard cut between the power so it won't do it but if you see that solid that means it's running it's ready to apply frequency when I turn this dial it will start turning now it's turning at 2340 um, rpms now if you, you probably can't see it on here but there is a decimal place there just ignore it it's running at 2300 rpms you can change this change this view to the Hertz if you wanted by clicking that double arrow button. Click that and it changes it over to Hertz. It is running at 39 Hertz right now. That's how it's, that's how it's controlling that. So if we increase that up, it goes to 71 Hertz, switch that back to RPMs. It's now running at 4,000, almost 5,000 RPMs. Now, if you run that straight up, there's a notch on here. It should run up to about 12,000 RPMs because that's halfway. There you go, if I can actually determine what's straight up and down. Um, and then, of course, if we spin this all the way up. Now, again, you don't want to run this for too long. It is producing heat, so don't run this too long without coolant. But you can see now it's running at 24,000 RPMs or 400 hertz. And, of course, we can hit the stop button. That's also a sort of a reset button. So when the motor finishes spinning down, it will start blinking again. When it starts blinking, it is then safe to touch your, uh, the, the, the collet nut. Because then it is definitely in a stopped state. Now it is currently set to 4000 hertz, but it is not running. So you can, you can just turn your dial there, you can just leave the dial there, stop it, change your bit, hit run again, and it'll go back to the, to, the, to the hertz that you'd had it at. It'd spin it slowly back up to the proper position. Now, when it was stopped and it was spinning down, it was actually using an electronic brake to slow that down so that you can actually get to it. Um, so yeah, that is the very basics of it, uh, of, the, uh, of the motor, of the spindle, of the VFD, um, of how to run it, and yeah, um, I think that's it. Let me, let me look at the uh, manual here. Let's see, we've got our starting the spindle, stopping the spindle. Um, we've got questions on here. Um, 
if uh, there's we have some uh, frequency and I ask questions on here. I'll add some more. If you guys have additional questions, just reach out to support at potencyncnc.com. Um, and I'll update this for uh, future future spin okay buyers. Um, and I'm also going to put this PDF up on the uh, docs site so that you guys can have access to that as well, of the latest version of this. Let's see. For the future, um, I've been, I'm looking into, um, I've actually got a VFD over there on the workbench. I'm setting up um, PWM and ground uh, connections for pretty much most CNCs in our category, the hobby CNCs. Um, other machines may use Modbus or RS-485. Um, those are also connected on there. I'll give a little details there. We talk about a manual versus override switch. Um, I'm going to be playing around with that. Um, a pause button. Um, hopefully I can come up with something. Pretty cool for there. Um, these are all different things that I saw online talking about spindles. Things that would be really nice, that are convenient, make things safer, make things easier. Um, here's the bit changer safety switch thing that I was talking about earlier. Um, if you have other ideas on how to expand your kit, expand your kit how, what you've done, or if you need help and just have a simple idea and want to look into it, just reach out. Let, let, let me know at support at ponccnc.com. And then, of course, the 12-month warranty on your kit. Um, the VFD has a 20-month warranty with the manufacturer. Um, the uh, spindle motor has a year. Um, and that is it. There. Yeah. So, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, again, support at PwnCNC.com. And, yeah. Remember, just don't just own your CNC dominate it.